Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is another video in my series of videos about an open source mapping robot that I'm working on. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to get your robot to start up and be all ready to go uh, by just turning on the power button. Um, I am going to talk about four different ways. I have done uh, two of them in recent history, one of them a while ago, and one I've just read about. Um, so let's talk about the one that I don't know so much about. And that is uh, Robot Upstart. Uh, this is something that's made for ROS2 to get, uh, to run one or more launch files at boot up. Um, it apparently makes things easy. I haven't used it yet. Um, I maybe will give it a try here in the future, but uh, it's really not that hard otherwise to get it going. Uh, the next one I'm going to talk about would be uh, System D. So this is the, the way that I have done it in the past, uh, but I don't know uh, specifically, um, I don't have an example worked out for you. Uh, so let's look at my computer here. Uh, if I was to set up a, a System D uh, startup, uh, I would be going into etc set slash system D slash system. Whoops. Okay. And then uh, on my system, I don't really have much that's uh, running as a service. Uh, I do have this one. And uh, we'll just take a quick look at it. I'm just going to uh, very quickly uh, go over it. Uh, you can find lots of examples on the web. The next way is actually the easiest way um, if you have a GUI, which we don't have on uh, the mapping robot, but I'm going to show it to you just for the sake of being complete. So if I go to Startup Applications, uh, I can create something else to launch at, uh, at Startup. And so I'll click Add, and I can give it any name. And the important part is the command that's run when you start up. And what you're going to do there is you're going to put uh, gnome-terminal and then dash e and then bash and then your script name, uh, like the full path to your script. and then the end quotes. And when you do that, uh, so you click Add, and now that'll show up right here, and that'll run when you boot up your computer. Um, it's also handy, you know, if you always know that I always have a terminal open and I always have my web browser and uh, I have my code editor, um, you know, that's it's handy to just use startup applications to, to uh, set all that up so you can be extra lazy like a good programmer. Um, and then uh, the final way that uh, I'm going to talk about is probably the most complex, but it's what I ended up doing here because, I don't know, it's what I did. <laughs> um, and that is to set up a, a cron job. So cron is uh, something that allows you to run programs and processes uh, on a periodic basis, and that might be once every hour, once a minute. Um, I'm doing it once per boot. Um, and so this is sort of a, a layer cake of things that you have to do in order to get it to work. But let's just uh, go uh, through, the, through the levels of the cake here. Um, so the first thing I have to do is to actually log into my robot. Okay. All right. 
right. And uh, I'm going to, I, should, I believe I have it in here somewhere. There we go. So I have this script within my uh, mapping robot um, package. I guess it'd be a package um, in the scripts directory. So oh, OK, it's real simple. All I do is, the first thing is I do is I source the setup.bash uh, script. Or, I'm not sure if that's a script. It's something. I'm pretty sure it is a script. Anyway, um, I source that, uh, just like you have to anytime you're going to run anything with ROS2. And then uh, I use a launch file, uh, in which case uh, I have called it uh, Mapping robot dot launch. Uh, oops, and it looks like I still have uh, a little bit of my debug information in here. As, as uh, when I was getting it running, I was logging it. Uh, but you do not need this section right here, and I'm going to take it out before I push this to uh, uh, GitHub. Um, actually, maybe I'll just do it right now, and you can just see. Uh, what is this? Okay. Um, Nano is a really handy uh, text editor. It's easier to understand than Vi. Um, that's what I use. Anyway, uh, so. Now we have to go look at the launch file. So I have that in the launch directory and I call it mappingrobot.launch or mappingrobotlaunch.py. And this is just about the simplest launch file that you could possibly have. Uh, but at this point, it's all I need for this robot. Um, so a launch file is going to import a couple of things uh, because it's a Python file and you just need, you know, about launch descriptions and nodes and stuff. Uh, then it always starts out def generate launch description and following that return launch description. And in my case, I am creating two nodes. So each one of these, well, this part right here is equivalent to typing in ROS2 run mapping robot MCU node and then hitting uh, enter. Um, I'm also just giving it a name MCU node, but uh, that's the default name, so it's really kind of pointless that I did that. But anyway, um, here I'm running another node mapping robot RP LiDAR node and uh, giving it a name RP LiDAR. And so there's that. Now, the final layer to this cake is we have to set up the cron job. So uh, the way you do that is you do cron tab uh, dash E. And whoops, I always spell that wrong. Okay. And this gives you uh, the list of cron jobs which I only have one on the mapping robot and it's saying when it it's, it's reboot uh, but it's really anytime it starts up not specifically when you do like pseudo reboot <coughs> and uh, you're going to run you know do this in a bash shell or um, you're running the script and uh, then you have the name of your script. And one thing that I forgot to say is that that script needs to be made executable. So let's, let's take a look at how, how you do that. Um, and which, uh, is that this one? No, wait. Okay, so if you look here, uh, mappingrobot.sh has 
when I do ll or ls-l, it'll give me a directory like this, and it, these are saying this is a directory. And then you have read, write, and execute for user, group, and other. Um, I think that uh, this is the pertinent one, so you don't maybe have to set permissions to all, uh, but it's just easiest to do it this way. Um, probably somebody out there who has security training would be just uh, screaming at me for doing this. I don't know. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is chmod startup. Why is it not? Uh... Oh, yes, because I need to do. There we go. So plus X means add executable uh, to uh, all three uh, user group and other. If I wanted to uh, set specifically specific ones, I can do the uh, binary code. So it's like three bits wide, so it could be zero to seven. So if I wanted, uh, well, whatever, if I did, chmod 000, that mean it had no permissions whatsoever. Nobody could do anything with that, um, which would probably mean that I couldn't then even change, <laughs> change it back. I'm not sure, uh, so don't do that. Uh, but plus x is, is what you want, and that allows you to execute it. And then, with all of that done, uh, after you've booted your robot up, uh, if you do ROS2 node list, it'll sit there and think for a second, and then boom, here we go. Um, and notice notice here that uh, for the RP LiDAR node, this is what it would normally default to the name, but I, I gave it the name RP LiDAR, and that's actually useful when you have more than one of the same kind of node running on a computer, such as if I had a second LiDAR or... Um, I don't know, <laughs> for whatever it might be. If I have more than one of the same kind of node to call them different names is a very useful thing. Uh, so that's how you get your robot to start up properly. Uh, I hope you found this useful. And um, for robotbrigade.com, I'm Jack Buffington.